Okay, so welcome to this uh, month's um, as a Kanban trainer. Um, usually it's a um, joint event between the Pro Kanban community uh, meta group and the Lineage at London meta group. And this time we have the, the honor and the privilege. We've been trying to arrange this for a while. Um, we have um, Itopa Sule with us um, from Canada at the moment. So for you, Itopa, it's like lunchtime? Yeah, this is uh, 12.04. So a good, good, good time to to talk about Kanban. <laughs> yes, you're getting the, the kind of like the flow, but it's like I want yeah, to come up. <laughs> there is there is flow, there is yeah. flow of, of fluids. <laughs> so it's great, it's, it's great to have you here. I mean, as usual, um, what we do is like we take we, we take questions from um, participants in the session. Um, if you can write the questions in, in chat and we will go around, we try to answer and discuss as many as possible and try to make it a conversation. Okay. So, um, but, you know, as we, we, we get started and we get hopefully some questions, um, Itopa, when, when, when we, we actually had the, the, the privilege, the opportunity to meet in person, like in 3D a couple of months ago, um, in London, um, with one of the, um, sort of like a, a professional scrum trainers face to face where you know our trainers get together and we can have a chat about things and we also had in the same week a, a, a professional Kanban trainer a pro Kanban trainer face to face so um it was great to have lots of conversation i mean you got like a really great background um, um psd pkt you are a professional with an icf professional coach PCC, you do IC Agile coaching. Um, tell us a little bit more about like all this mix, like the Scrum, the Kanbans, the coaching. How's, yeah. how's your, your, your experience, your work, your, how, how are things things to share? Great. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been on this journey for some time and it's just fascinating how much there is there to learn and share. So, and, and that's the, the, the motivating uh, factor for me. Uh, just being able to learn, apply, and share uh, experience with others has, has been the main driver. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I became a professional Scrum trainer and PKT uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, we've, uh, we've run a lot of uh, sessions with, uh, with uh, a lot of classes. But the main thing for me is the ability to apply um, what we learn in the organization. So I, I am an uh, agile coach. I work with um, an organization, uh, an insurance organization here. Um, and I've seen um, Kanban applied at different level uh, to help number one, provide uh, visibility and number two, to ensure that we can um, understand how business value is flowing from uh, when uh, the trigger of, for, for value is received till when we get to uh, that end point where the customer actually is happy with, uh, with, uh, with value. So mm -hmm. um, in essence, either it's at the, at the squad or team level or at the program level or at the um, executive level, I've seen a great use of all the techniques that um, uh, we, we, we may be talking about today. So mm -hmm. that's been the journey for me, helping businesses actually understand how they are delivering value and how that can be optimized. Mm -hmm. I heard you talking about like, uh, they are like come on a team level, executive level, program level. How, um, how different is your experience about like the people in those, in those different levels those on these different, they have different concerns, different worries, different, different base of flow. Mm -hmm. What's that, how how how, did, how different can be like Kanban and in those in those different contexts? Yeah, I'll start with the first time that um, I had to introduce or talk about visualize or looking at the flow for mm -hmm. a team. Mm -hmm. So what I observed was there is this tendency of looking at the sprint like a black box. Mm -hmm. where after the sprint planning, we have the goal and the backlog items. Mm -hmm. And somehow we're not able to track what's going well 
on a day-to-day -day basis? Where do we need to work together as, as a group rather than individual items that we're working on? Mm -hmm. uh, so introducing uh, Kanban at that level, allow everyone to see what's going on. And on a day-to-day -day basis, just looking at each work item and where they are and what's stopping us from moving ahead, allow people to, to just have a better plan for the next 24 hours. And at the end of the day, uh, the sprint itself has become less of a black box, mm -hmm. more of something that we inspect on a day-to-day -day basis. And that resulted in, uh, in good flow and value delivery at the end of the day. Um, that's one at, at, the, at the squad level. But then uh, you also realize that organizations are different are at different uh, stage on the agility journey. Yeah. What's happening outside of one team that's impacting um, how they deliver value? What we can have a strategy around that to be able to not just the individual work items, but actually looking at it globally and the dependencies that are therein. So that's where we start talking about, okay, let's look at everything that everyone is working on at a higher level and be able to also the same basic uh, techniques of flow and lean mm -hmm. principles, all in the service of making sure that we are able to Number one, improve on the flow of value and increase, uh, decrease the, the cycle time, thereby increasing the, uh, uh, the, the time to market. Um, so that's at a different level, but the, the core concepts are the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is a little bit different in, in, in the thing, like when you start going beyond the team, I guess it's like, things well, things that many teams suffer although we talk about many times in the idea of have autonomous independent teams in many organizations that's well it's an ideal but the reality is that there are dependencies there are interactions there are there are there are um, collaborations or not yeah between teams so i guess a product management that becomes very relevant isn't it yep mm -hmm. exactly it, it, mm -hmm. that's that high level view of Hmm. what's dependent on what and what if if we have an item uh, not moving in one area mm -hmm. most time is because there is something outside of that immediate team that needs to be resolved and if you do not have that uh holistic view yep. you may be doing uh what we call the the uh, local optimization and yeah uh, things will not move yeah and then, and then we have teams that also like what their experience is this tsunami of work coming at them because it's like, yeah, let's just start another project. Yeah, let's just start another initiative. So we have to, we, we have to manage that. Um, I haven't seen any questions yet. So hopefully people have some questions. If anybody has a question that you would like to ask verbally, you can get the microphone on, you hopefully get your camera on and you can ask a question. Otherwise, Itopa and I continue talking. <laughs> Hakan, do you have a question? Well, that was just a smile. <laughs> okay, I think it was just a laugh. Anyone? Yeah. No? You can ask him anything. Yeah, and uh, that, that's a, a great point that you, you brought about um, yeah. the amount of work that teams tend to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my experiences also is that once we are not able to move a work item forward, there is yeah. this tendency of starting something. So yeah. yeah. I'm in a conversation <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Itopa, this needs to be done. So we are stuck on this. Maybe we should just bring another one that may, we'll have success at. And there is no, there is no uh, empirical data to show that you can even complete that. So what happened at the end of the day is we start from one being stuck and then we bring in another one. Now we have two, we have three. And at the end of the day, 
nothing is flowing out of the system. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's human behavior again, we have to look at because there is tendency to, okay, we, we, we're not on, we cannot make progress on this, let's start something else. But it's counterintuitive to say, we are not making progress on this. Let's focus and look at what's holding us from moving forward. Even if we have to drop everything, it's mm -hmm. counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, but drawing attention to that and focusing on getting something out rather than starting more additional work items is what, uh, what one of the strategies that um, you, you, people, I've seen people apply. It is, often, is it often easier to decide to start something than to uh, resolve whatever is, st is stopping us from finishing something? Yeah. So we start work. I was working, um, this is some time ago, with, with, um, with a client that when we, when we actually managed to put like, something like metrics and visualization in front of them, um, the amount of work that was stuck in the system and never been out was enormous and, and it was that kind of situation it was very easy to oh we have a problem here let's start something else yeah and we have a problem here let's start something else um so it was like it, it was a like, if you think about gluttony the, the organization was like literally creating what we call like a denial of service on itself exactly you know service more, on more, the team <laughs> yeah. and every and everybody's upset because hey you're not delivering anything but let's start something else yeah, the more we start, the more we fi no, the more we start, the less we finish. Um, I can see that a Punit Punet has a hands up. Would you like to uh, make a comment or ask a question? Hmm. Yeah, hmm. actually, I wanted to ask a question uh, because right now my team is uh, following a Scrum with Kanban sort of, and hmm. uh, you know, most part is it's Kanban, but the problem right now what we are facing is about the spillovers because. When we move from one to uh, next sprints uh, in Scrum with Kanban, yeah. then uh, I mean I don't know if this is a valid question here or not, but I, though I really want to ask uh, because yeah. this is the problem that I'm facing right now, and yes. with my team and uh, you know I always see that there are scope changes which is uh, actually okay because we are following agile, so scope changes would be there that I understand. But even then, though, uh, we are, uh, you know, having a spillovers and that's what is a little of concern for me because we have promised to deliver some work. And uh, I last time I attended one session from Eric Ball. So where she mentioned that if you are delivering something towards the increment, then it is, uh, you know, fruitful. I mean, it, that is part of increment. So we should not be thinking much about it. But still, uh, you know, the question remains about the spillovers, what to be done. And how can I minimize it? Uh, even if I'm, uh, you know, uh, should I be moving purely towards Kanban or uh, what should I be, you know, there are many thoughts coming in mind, but I'm still not able to solve this spillover thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a, if I understand you correctly, spillover means that you are running sprints and from sprint to sprint, you, you're not able to complete uh, the work that you, you plan to complete. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, sort of because, uh, you know, we get the scope changes. That is something if it comes on the way and that's what is an expedited item. We have to, you know, take that into account. Uh, and because of that, what happens, the item which were planned, it, they goes into spillovers okay. as a spillovers to the next sprints. Yeah, th th there is something that uh, I have seen people do and I've applied it sometimes is you're right that changes will come because actually we, that's how we want to be structured, to accept changes when they come. Then you have to make a decision when changes come. Now, we're planning to do A. Now we have to do B. What is the value of doing A or B? This is a reasonable question that a team will ask. If the new item, for example, if I have a disruption in production and something needs to be fixed. Even though I have committed to some, some other work, the value, because it impacts our customer, there's no, there's no conversation here. We have to fix that so that customers can continue to enjoy the service, right? So, but some of the times we do not stop to ask that question. 
whether the new thing that we want to do is more valuable than what we thought we we're going to do in the first place. So stepping back and asking that question about relative value of the new thing that we now have to do can help. Uh, but as you continue to notice that over time, maybe there's another question we should be asking. Uh, I've, I've worked with a team that sees uh, we're always having this interruption from other systems. And the question is, if from time to time this is your reality, should we still be treating it as an ad hoc request or we should actually position our team in a way to be able to accommodate those? Because that's our reality. I'm yeah. not sure if that's um, helpful. I'm not giving you direct answer. I'm giving you questions that you could ask. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I got your point. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it I also, uh, uh, I'm also thinking about it now because I've never thought about uh, such a direction. So I really think that it is really helpful. If, if I add a couple a couple of things, a couple of thoughts on that, I mean, the, what, what it was saying, like a spot on to think. Another one is if, if what is changing is the actual scope of the work item, yeah, um, as is, as as Itopa said, that's that that's probably part of the knowledge discovery. Yeah, as a retrospection of opportunity, you will say is like why why is this happening because it's just normal discovery process, or do we have an improvement opportunity in how we define some of the stories? Um, sometimes it, it could be that we are simply pulling work that is just not not understood understood well enough or not defined well enough. Um, it's normal that there will be some discovery. Of course, it's normal. Yeah, but how much there is, it could be perhaps maybe because we are not doing good enough refinement. We are not doing. Uh, it could be something that we could we could address to some degree, not entirely, but to some degree. Yeah, um, because that effectively is changing your plan. Yeah. 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 Another thing to consider is like I'm. Uh, um, um, Connecting it because we're using we're using both the language of Scrum and Kanban. They both work together perfectly. Yeah, um, the from the from the Kanban perspective is like the interesting thing is that when we when we take the work into the sprint and the team starts working on it, we are creating an expectation. We are signaling to our stakeholders, our customers, that we intend to deliver this as soon as possible. Yeah, there is no obligation to finish it in the sprint. What the only thing that is, the only thing that Scrum will say is like you at the end of the sprint at the very least have an increment which is ready, yeah. But if some work is not being finished, but the increment is ready for the other work that is finished, you're okay, yeah. But we need to keep in mind about like okay, what kind of expectations people have and what how are we communicating those expectations, because it could be that it's okay for there is no reason why you couldn't take it beyond the sprint. If it's not ready, it's not ready. But think about things like, you know, what's your incumbent terms? Where is your SLE? Are you are you able to meet your SLEs? What is the customer expectation? Are you are you protecting your 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 um your increment? Are you meeting your definition of done? So we're mixing the two Scrum and Kanban yeah. principles. They are compatible. Yes. But there is no reason why you don't. Nothing stops us from not having carryovers. Um, but what we have to have is an increment okay. at the end of the sprint. Yeah. yeah, an increment that meets the definition of done. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Now the thing is like, how could this affect the, the, the customers? What is your SLAs? You know, why is this happening? I mean, good retrospective things. Why, you know, uh, why is it happening? Yeah. It yeah. could be absolutely because of the right reasons. It could be something that you can improve. Yeah, we don't know. Excellent. Is that uh, right, Pini? Yeah, uh, that is good. Uh, just adding to my this question, uh, if I'm not taking much time. Uh, so, uh, mm. I uh, as I mentioned about a scope change and this is spillovers things. So, uh, in in your uh, like you have worked with different organizations, you have met the people from different organizations, and uh, you know the Scrum trainers and Kanban trainers. I would like to know if there is something that. Uh, they say, uh, okay, this much percent of a scope change to our planned uh, uh, sprint or let's say 
is okay like for example 20% of if the new work comes in or we discover something new which adds to my scope change uh, and then at the end of the sprint i can say that okay this was a good thing uh, okay 20% is fine we are with okay with that so who decides it i mean is it product owner the scrum team or maybe the i, I won't say the scrum team because this is kanban related so maybe the team and mm-hmm. who who does it i mean who takes the responsibility for it if, is there any one let me let me start and then uh jose definitely you're welcome to to anil um the, i'll take it a little bit a uh, different direction and because we are mixing uh scrum and kanban here i'll talk a little bit about about scrum so at the end of your planning your sprint planning what are you committing to you're committing to the sprint goal that's the commitment not the backlog items that you have pulled in to meet the sprint goal so your conversation should always be about are we meeting the sprint goal and if you meet the sprint goal you have an increment that meets the definition of that scope of work and and i'm going back to what you said about discovery and learning we pick this uh pro backlog items based on the on the state of our understanding of what is there at the point of the planning we're going to go into uh discovery to actually understand everything that is there if at the end of the day we found out oh, there's more here that that's still okay we've learned something and now the onus is on the team to say we have a commitment to the sprint goal what can we do based on what we have learned to meet that goal so this makes the scope itself very fluid the work items very fluid because you have a goal which is the commitment for that uh sprint iteration now if we come to kanban um you you're not committing to a fixed time to to deliver something you're looking at your sle and sle is about forecasting all the items i have are they still within the sle or not if not what do we need to be doing as a team so i say i've seen that and i'll call that uh, an anti-pattern where uh people say okay if you have if you commit to 20 uh 20 stories and you finish 16 which is like 20 percent less you're still okay or something like that and that's where I, I think you should maybe we should dial back and focus on what's really important here is it the work items that we have listed or the goal and i think it's the second absolutely yeah i hope and that's even helpful if, even if even if the kanban guy doesn't talk about goals goals are really important um because i mean when when things happen usually the goal is, is is a very good guidance to say okay what what kind of decisions do we need to take as a team to deliver value or to deliver something of importance so um before i go into answering a couple yeah we have adding, two questions <laughs> yeah. before i go before i go um adding to, to what i did um when we talk about scrum and kanban and all the stuff and this is a, as a kanban trainer um it it might sound controversial but the scrum per se is 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 a version of, of kanban these days the scrum is a flow based um framework is, is fully compatible with, with Kanban. So if we talk about Scrum a little bit, we are talking about uh, Kanban. And now I can get all the all the flame in the in the internet and all the stuff. It's okay, I'll take yeah. it. Um, but um, what, what when you're talking about like what makes him, if it's 20% of 25% scope different, I, I don't even know how to measure that, to be honest. I wouldn't know what, um, how would you measure that is 20% deviation from scope? And um, learning is learning is learning so it, it, it's it's okay you know i if you need to deliver if you're thinking about delivery and all the stuff if teams are having deviation which they will have the scope in some ways will be evolving as we discover i think you know teams have the opportunity to to have a conversation to say look is there a way of splitting this story a little bit so that we can deliver something and then we we keep this for the future 
or is there a way of you know just throwing something away and just keeping up do we just extend do we just continue working on it um into the next cycle or sprint or whatever you're using yeah um do we need to discope the whole thing because it just has lost all its purpose yeah so the teams have these conversations that, that they're very valuable um i don't think there is a percentage i mean there is there is a stories that will be um, losing losing meaning in the sense of like okay it has changed so much we discover something that just invalidates the whole thing sometimes yeah. it's a question like you know just just break it down into two parts or, or more parts whatever it is or, or just deliver it as a whole even if it takes longer so um that does that's the useful conversation that for me teams have is is what do we do with what do we do with what we are learning yes yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, thank you for uh, the question Pune. yeah yeah just just one one sentence i have seen i have seen um teams that deliver 100 percent on the scope from time to time but no value sorry i was saying that uh, our focus is always is on the value uh with the flow that we have i mean the team has decided and uh, at the end of the day deliver the uh you know the goal towards our yeah. goal so that is our focus. So I, these are a few things which I have noticed uh, over the period of time uh, in multiple sprints uh, in with different teams. And uh, that's what I wanted to know. Like if I'm doing something wrong, then I must correct it. Uh, listening and, uh, you know, learning from the trainer. So I wanted to take this opportunity. Thank you very much. Jose. Thank you for bringing the question. It's great. Um, let's move to another question. I got a, a question that was sent to me privately. Okay. So I'm assuming the person doesn't want to ask it. Um, um, themselves. So I, I, I'll, I'll share the question with you. Um, um, and it's a great question talking about this thing. When to use or not to use Kanban? Mm. Because we talk about always about using Kanban. When should we not use Kanban? Any, any experience of that? Any thoughts? Um, to be very hard for me to say right now mm -hmm. when not to use Kanban as a way of understanding um delivery flow understanding yeah. your 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 workflow and uh visualizing that for everyone and creating the transparency is hard for me but maybe another thing i i would add is not every stickies on the wall is a kanban Mm -hmm. Not every board we see on the wall <clears throat> is a Kanban. And this is, this is where we, we look at what are the basic essentials. If, if, uh, if you want to use uh, Kanban as a strategy for delivering value to your customer, which is what it is. I have seen, uh, we use it at home. I have seen people use it in sales. I've seen people use it in a, in a, in a law firm. I would say that you can use it everywhere, but not everything, not every board that you see uh, is a Kanban. And there are a few uh, practices that you, you want to adhere to. Number one is understanding what kind of work items do we, do we, do we handle here as, a, as an organization, or as a person? What are those things we do? Number yeah. two is what, what is the flow? What is the workflow? What does completing a work item looks like? what stages yeah. do they pass through and when i say stages stages of value addition what are those what are those steps and then number three uh, how do we optimize how do we optimize flow of value from the beginning whatever we consider the, the start to the end so I, I know this may sound uh funny i i would say that you can actually apply kanban anywhere mm -hmm. so um I'm gonna agree with you, but maybe I'm gonna offer one 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 thing when maybe I, I wouldn't use Kanban. So the thing the thing about the power of Kanban is how versatile it is. And the and the cares of Kanban is how versatile it is. So um and and for me the thing the, the, the thing the, the, depending on what kind of context and environment you have, your Kanban will be adapting to that context right um when we are talking about kanban many times in in the kind of environments that we are knowledge um, knowledge base complex complex enough environments we have the definition of workflows you know we we, we start looking at 
our metrics, our policies, dealing with change, dealing with variability. Um, that's the sort of Kanban that we use in, in, in knowledge environments. Okay. Um, when, if you have an environment which is way more deterministic, for example, I've been working um, a lot lately with finance teams. And in, in the finance teams that I've been working with, the work is fairly well defined and repetitive. So they are using Kanban, but it's a different kind of Kanban. It's much more like a, um, a more deterministic process. You, you, what you start doing tends to not change. They have very, very well understood processes for doing financial work. So it's, it's, it, there the value is timing, understanding the timing, understanding the, the, the amount of work. Um, it's, it, it's similar to the Kanban that we use in IT, for example, but it, it has different characteristics. The work has different characteristics. Um, so it, it does change a little bit. Um, that's when it goes into the more deterministic. What you plan to do is what you what you get. What you do is, is what you plan to do, typically. There is the expectation that what you, you just set out to do is what you get. Go to the other end, and I think Craig was talk, mentioned that when you're in really, really chaotic environments, you don't have a process. Then Kanban is really difficult to use because if you don't have a process, maybe your workflow is just simply to do, doing, done. And, and their Kanban is basically just visualizing how much stuff are we doing. Um, you've got people doing personal Kanbans and things like that. So, you know, it could be that the environment is so... Um, there is no process at all, basically a very, very loose process, that a lot of what we, we say Kanban does for us, it's not present there. And, and you might just use Kanban as a visualization tool. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, um, I, I, and, and I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. The value you get is, <laughs> is what, what's uh, most important here, which is if you are in that very deterministic environment, mm -hmm. it's, it's what we plan that we're going to do. So you can mm -hmm. analyze the data from now till next year. It, it doesn't influence any change in behavior because yeah. that's what we've set out to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah. there, and, there, and there the focus is to remove variability. Yeah. The, the, you look for the variability and you try to remove it. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, uh, uh, if there is a pushback, like uh, uh, Craig talked about emotional uh, yes. readiness. Yeah, definitely. It, this should be a Kanban system members uh are willing members <laughs> it's not there's no coercion we must use this like system members sit together and decide that okay this could help us address some of the things that we are seeing and they go for okay. it and that's a great point because many times what we see uh, problems about kanban is not it's not the it's not kanban per se is have we created the right conditions for kanban and for the change to happen i, I keep talking about the fact that to good Kanban or good anything, good change, involves people being ready, willing, and able. Um, and sometimes we, we miss something there. Able will be that they don't have enough knowledge or they don't have the right tools or the, you know, whatever, the environment is not ready. Is not ready. Readiness is environmental. You know, are things ready for it? And then are people willing to do it? Do it. We don't get the three of them, that, that combination of readiness, willingness, and ableness. Um, expect trouble. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's 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 would be a place where I wouldn't I wouldn't just come I wouldn't do I wouldn't do change for the full and the full stuff. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Okay. Can you use mm. Kanban? Yes. Will you get the value? Probably no. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And then yeah, actually we are inflicting Kanban on people. On people. Than... Yes. <laughs> more Kanban. More Kanban. <laughs> All right. Um, Mahesh has been waiting for a while. He had a question about. Um, um, come on, Mahesh, would you like to ask the question yourself? It's quite a yeah. bit of need. Yeah. <laughs> I know I can do that. So um, our context is that we are a set of operations teams, or maybe we can call us that a support team, uh, which are really supporting an IT software organization. So a lot of our work is about keeping the, keeping the lights on to say, we always keep the system on. So we are starting our journey into agility. We are we are somewhere in the beginning, and mm -hmm. I, I see Kanban to be a 
to be a thing to get started with because it's simple to start. Uh, making the system as visual as possible is one of my intention. And then I, I'm looking at Scrum with Kanban as a way forward when we have some goals in place where we can uh, really have some meaningful sprints. But uh, I mean, and my question becomes that what is the best of Kanban to, to apply in the beginning in order to make our reactive teams a, a bit a bit more proactive? Right now, interruption is our reality. Uh, we are very reactive in nature. And if we want to become proactive, what is the best of Kanban? To, to apply in the beginning of the journey. Can you define proactive for me? Uh, that would be a sensing that something is coming to us and we are we have some plan about it. Not, not just that request comes in into the queue and we are we are we start to work on that. Some mm -hmm. some sort of uh, control on how do we pick up the request in, in the queue. That is for that is proactiveness for us. I mean I would say that. Yeah, thanks, Mahesh, for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. um, what Kanban helps us to achieve using all the practices that we can go into is what we call the pool system. Mm -hmm. In the push system, what happens is that we create cues at the doorstep of each of those steps in the process. So things come in and then maybe whoever shout the loudest we pick mm -hmm. that we pick that and then another come in we pick that but in a pool system what happened is that you are able to see or at least uh, start with a whip limit that you arrive at uh, on experimentation basis you know okay if we have this number of people here here's the amount of work that can actually flow through without waiting Mm -hmm. And over time, you understand what that what that is for each of the stages, and that allows you to pull in items from the incoming uh, pool or backlog or whatever you call it. You pull in items based on the availability of uh, people to actually service that uh, request. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Kanban can help you to establish that pool system so which which is uh i guess based on what you described we are more of a push now work is being pushed to the to the set of teams that you're working with so in the in the most uh simplest implementation of kanban you can get that pool system and you also have the opportunity to understand what your workflow is and over time use some of the metrics to understand your flow and how those um, uh, controls can help you ensure that there is there is a flow of value in the system. Mm -hmm. I, that's a very high level. Let me know if you have a follow-up question. No, that was truly helpful. Any example metrics that we can use in the beginning of the journey, which will which will keep 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 us thinking and looking at something which is helping us establish that flow of value. Yeah, I mean, um, metric eventually will, determine, will depend on what exactly you want to track, but there are a few, few metrics that I would start with. Mm -hmm. What, how long does it take today from when you start working on an item to when you deliver it? That's your cycle time. Mm -hmm. What is the throughput? How many times, how many items are going through the system? We are all busy working and, and all that. How many things are we actually getting resolved? Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which is my favorite, is the, if you look at a work item, how long has it been on the system? You know, you have to differentiate between in process and in progress. Just mm -hmm. because you start an item does not mean that it's flowing. So the work item aging allows you to specifically look at an item and we've not been working on it, even though it's in progress, which clogs the system. Mm -hmm. right, so those are, and, and this, these measures are very easy to, to, to get. Like your mm -hmm. throughput is, okay, here is the, the start time and the end, how many items over this period, how many items were we able to complete? Mm 
And mm -hmm. as you begin to track that, you, you understand whether uh, your flow is right or not, and adjust your policies accordingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think you touch, I mean, you touch the, the aging in particular with the metrics, which are really, really important. Um, couple of things to couple of things that I will mention. For example, there, there is a client that I'm sort of like working with right now. And when we first show them the aging chart that you get in, you know, in your in your agile tools, um, the picture was so scary that they didn't want to open the chart again. They almost uninstall the tool. Um, so the interesting thing is that many times in the in the agile in the agile world in Kanban we we go for visualization first. Okay, what what work do we have? What what's this, what is the state of work? And what's our process and all the stuff? Do we measure? What is, what are the metrics telling us? Um, the whole concept of, for example, transparency can be very 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 scary in some environments because it might tell a story that I don't want to I don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So be mindful of things like that. But yes, I mean, things like visualization, um, aging, time to market, you know, throughput, very, you know, very, very powerful things. Um, I love what you said there, Itopa, about the, um, the, the moving from pull to push, uh, from push to pull, sorry. Um, because uh, and every context will be different, but this can be a really, 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 really fundamental change. I mean, for example, another company that I used to work with, they had an internal policy that whenever they created a story or an item, whatever it was, yeah, um, they automatically had to allocate it to someone. Yeah. Um, so just stopping them doing that. That was a push. Yeah, it's like by default, someone somewhere in the organization will assign the story to someone else. So that was that 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 has all these pre pre basically you were pre committed to do the work. Yeah. Um. So even stopping things like that, where it's like, look, you know, the, you only have an IC, and the, only the person that is ready to start working on it will put their name as the assignee. Yeah, that can be very powerful, and for that you might not need visualization or anything. Yeah, and it might change the dynamics very, very quickly. Um, when you talk about proactive and reactive, many organizations have so much work in progress that it's possible to be proactive. We, we are constantly being inundated with world. We have this denial of service as we talk about it. So even just stopping the the floodgates, the, the tsunami to, to, to and say, like, look, you know, we, we will start whatever we feel we can start. Um, can be extremely profound change. Mm -hmm. And it's a change of policy. Mm -hmm. It's just a change of policy. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mahesh. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, thanks, uh, Craig. Yes, aging, aging is, is very, very important. It's, it's, I would say that's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just understanding how long an item has stayed here without movement. Yeah. Um, um, Craig, I'd love you to, to talk a little bit more about this uh, pilot mode in Trello and in tools. Um, I'm not sure every, everyone will know about it. So would you like to tell us a little bit about pilot mode? Well, what is it? Have you seen that, Itopa? No, I, I actually made a, made a note for myself here to check it out. <laughs> Craig, would you like to, would you like to Give us a little bit of your, your thoughts on that. I like the R. <laughs> okay. I guess it's a no. Okay. So yeah. make a note, people. By that mode in Trello. See what that is. Um I saw Diana mm -hmm. came came off camera. Um do you have a question for us, Diana? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, we are talking about the pull and push system, and um, I'm working with, with a few teams. I'm an agile coach in a company, blah, blah. And um, there is a lot, everyone, like everyone is just pushing work to the system, to the teams, like management, the group, the I don't know, and just everyone is just pushing. And 
we, we can't really hold a sprint, hold something. We, we can't stick to anything because it just get pushed to the system again and again, like every day, actually. So what would be your advice or any tips or whatever? <laughs> good question, I, I, yeah, hmm. very good question. I wear a different hat now. I wear the hat of, uh, of a coach. How is this impacting your delivery? With a lot of delays, if, if any delivery is there, but okay. we have delays, 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 really. And I, I, I even did that game with the shipbuilding and the pull and the push system. I thought that would be like really good for, yeah, for something, but yeah. I did it and well, nothing it, really happened after this as well. It didn't end well. Tell me more about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I did like, I don't know how many workshops, um, but uh, yeah, nobody was uh, kept this in mind. What is happening to the red ship? You, you know this and um, yeah, well, now we have all red ships. Okay. And um, if I try to refer to that example, well, resistant wherever I look and yeah while not trying to solution for this you ask for tip and I'm, I'm just going to say what will I do in this if I were in Diana's shoes um there is a lot of work coming in and as a result we are not able to deliver on anything it's like the denial of service that Jose just talked about and I'm thinking that Diana is I, as Diana, I'm not in position to actually stop that floodgate. So I would ask, who can help stop that floodgate? And it's not just asking, it's helping to paint the picture of how we are not delivering because of this. And it's be an obvious question of, if we really want to deliver, maybe we should do something about the way we pull work in. What can we experiment with? So here now you have a hypothesis. We're going to try what we can do to ensure if delivery is important to us, unless it's not. If it's important to us, let that be our measure of success. Here is how many I to, well, here's our throughput today. Here's the throughput we like to get to. What's the experiment that we can do to see how things are changing? Simple thing like uh, Jose mentioned is just automatically assigning work to people on the team. I don't know your context. Just Starting new items when we have a lot in, in, uh, in progress. What's our whip? What's our whip limit? What can we play with? How can we adjust that to see? Now, your measure is, is throughput. Do we have the right throughput that we need as an organization? So that's why I was asking that question because one thing is to say that nothing is working. Another thing is to show the impact of nothing is working and what can we experiment with? Yes. One, one, one thing that we did in a, in a company a few years ago was that the tendency to start more work all the time. Yeah. The, this company, for example, had, had two different versions of the, of the let's start more work. Um, one, one version was we're starting more work. We are agile. We'll do that. So we're going to discope some of the work. Yeah, but what that we started, we're not, we, we, we still want to deliver that, but we're discoping it for the time being. Yeah. And the other one was, all right, we are doing more work. We just, the work is there, but we are abandoning it for now. We're not paying too much attention because something more important is. So what we, one thing that we did is that whenever, whenever this kind of like trade-off happened, like, okay, well, you want more work. Um, we had something really important this week. Yeah. So in order to do that, we're going to stop some other work which probably was important last week. And next week, there will be something important and we will have to stop the word that we was important the previous week. So it's, it's always this, this message, always like something important is happening, but we can never deliver. 
what we did was that we didn't we didn't use block the concept of blockers but we use the concept of orphaned work nothing move out of the team the temptation to move the, the thing oh well put it back in the backlog no 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 it stayed in the board wherever it was yeah what we did is mark it as orphaned it's a, it was a kind of version a version of like blocker but not not so negative and what we could do then is me is measure how long the item had been orphaned and we could say look it took 80 days to deliver this this piece of work but 65 of those days the work was orphaned why because we did 10 days worth of work for example then it got discoped then it took 60 days while nothing and then someone shouted and then we had to finish it off and it was just finished in four days or five days so we could have finished it in 25 days or in 15 days but it took us 80 and the, and that's the impact of bringing all these things all the time with priority so we had to play a little bit of a patient game of building the all right let, let's show you the consequences of your actions uh -huh. now if you want to continue working like that that's fine but there are consequences especially consequences to your time to market and go and talk to the customer or the stakeholder and the stakeholder is going to be absolutely furious how long it's taking things yeah probably it's the same so this is the same stakeholder the one that is causing the problem yeah so we did something to try to show them the impact of their of their actions and then say well, it's your choice yeah. um it's in that concept sorry Itopa, you wanted to... no no that, that's yeah thank you for for that example so it's showing the impact or consequence of what we're doing and mm -hmm. then making it an a, a, an open decision for for everybody to 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 pitch in like what do we do about it this is as a result of what we're doing yeah uh, if we're going to change what 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 are the simple uh, things yeah. that we we can do yeah. And, and and it's it's applying the concept of the prime the, the prime directive yeah people people are trying to do things with the best of intentions sometimes we just don't know the consequences of our intentions and and the best we can do I, i'm going and tell the, tell someone this is going to be wrong it's just not going to go anywhere that kind of yeah so something like um we took that decision this is what this is the these are the consequences or, or we could say do it as an experiment if this works how do you know that this is having positive results and show the data that confirms or denies that yeah. afterwards but just give the people opportunity to change their mind as they learn the consequences of the decisions yeah yeah and um com coming back to kanban um i mean you can do this <laughs> in multiple ways um you can sorry yeah i know <laughs> 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 yeah going back to metrics that's what i that's exactly what i wanted to say you could use the uh your, your throughput for example nothing is coming out your item mm -hmm. work item aging how long is this is this been in this system and it's, it's not moving right or your your cycle time and you can see how those those items that you pick in and then you pause on them or often as as you you rightly described it will will be at the extremities so be very high out there when some things are, are going out um yeah. relatively shorter time yeah and this i've been going to going to uh, not the party but you know the tools like Trello has this aging kind of like things that start wrinkle yeah the visualization <laughs> of very old t very old items yeah the things that in terms of throughput throughput is kind of like uh, very difficult to change it's very insensitive to changes yeah. in the system the, the, sometimes the problem of is that the throughput doesn't seem to be changing. They're still delivering 10 items per week, whatever it is. Yeah. The problem is that each one of those items is ancient. <laughs> and that, and that's sometimes what the problem is that we don't, we don't see the change in throughput, but is the change in, the, in, in cycle time, what can be in, in really eye opening. And if you then look inside the, okay. Yeah. Ha, it took 80 days, but what happened in those 80 days? Oh, and that's what, yeah. yeah. So that is fabulous. It's fabulous to have. I mean, obviously, these are very um, Diana. The, the kind of example that Diana is giving is, is with all the best intentions, people are doing sometimes things which are we know they're not going to be useful towards the the work, the delivery of value. But they're trying to do they're trying to do good stuff. It's just like how do we show? Good intention. Um, 
we might have a final chance. I mean, we're trying to not go beyond the, the 60 minutes. Um, one final question or thought or contribution, anyone? Uh, is Craig back? Not sure. I think Craig, I oh, think Craig is Yes, back. I'm here. Ooh. Hey, oh, there you are. Tell, you? Us about, tell us about Pilot. <laughs> Greetings from uh, Miami Airport. Hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Our> commitment. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, tell us a little bit about pilot mode. You got you got two or three minutes. So <laughs> put the mic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows the uh, that's exactly what you said. It shows the the items like parchment paper and the cards. Uh, as they get oh, older yeah. and older, they crinkle and they start to age and they get little spots on them and everything. And it looks it looks it looks a lot like. Uh, you know, papyrus, ancient papyrus. So it's just such a, 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 a really strong visual image. It's really cool. So this, it's a plugin for Trello, it's a free plugin for Trello. Uh, and I haven't really seen it. I think Kanban Zone has a version of it, uh, yeah. and I haven't seen it in the other tools yet. Yeah. I just think it's such cool. a cool, uh, cool thing. So it doesn't change the color. So whatever color you have in the ticket, let's say bugs are red or pink or whatever, but they would just start to crinkle and crackle and look old and aged and stuff like that. And it's just, a, it's a very powerful image. Uh, even just a subtle cracking of that, it's just, it's just such a powerful image and it's very clear which ones are older. What, so, what yeah, I, I love it, it's just awesome. What I wish, I, I, I never knew that that was called pilot mode. I've, I've seen the parchment, but you know what I would <laughs> love? You know what I would love with that? Like the proper evil version of that is that the actual text and the content disappears over time. You know, the, it fades. So you leave the story for too long in your system. At one point, the system is going to intentionally forget what it was in there. So then what? We ask in action. I mean, okay. When you see story. <laughs> you see stories that have been in the backlog for four years. It's like it has no chance of ever being delivered, so they delete them. So that would be the evil pirate mode. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Greg, for chipping Thank in. Greg. Yeah. Why sure. am I glitching yeah. so? Much? And enjoy, enjoy, enjoy Miami. I hope, I hope it's a um, well, a family holiday as well. So, yeah. okay, um, that's the um, we we are on the on the hour. Um, Itopa, any any parting thoughts? Any any any? So I, I, I would just invite everyone to take a look at the kanbanguides.org or Pro Kanban yeah. for some of the uh, trainings that uh, are in offering um, to learn more and uh, also find opportunities to contribute as well. Uh, it's a very vibrant community, and uh, if there's any question you still have in your mind that you couldn't ask today, throw it in the uh, Pro Kanban um, either Slack or you see you see uh, some outlets there that you can use. But we we are here to to help um, just see how we move forward as a community. So it's it's been a great pleasure to talk to all of you. I hope it's useful. Yes, um, really thank you for your questions as well. They've been really really good questions and, and great conversation. Itoba, I know it's um. It's taken us a while to be able to arrange it, but like it has been really, really enjoyable. So hopefully we can get you back soon again. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. As usual, this session has been is being recorded. So assuming that there are no technical issues, um, it will be um, uploaded into the into the playlist um, for the Lina, I think it's the Lina London playlist. So we'll share the link. Um, if you are um, interested in Kanban, Pro Kanban, um, check the Pro Kanban Slack channel. Um, the link is in the Pro Kanban website, prokanban.org. Um, so I think in the resources area or somewhere in the menu, you can find the Slack channel. There is the Meetup group and there is the Pro Kanban um, page in LinkedIn. Um, those are the places where we will, you know, um, usually announce new new sessions like this one put the videos, any questions, the Slack channel is great. Um, you got access to a very, very, very rich and open community. So hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you again for being here with us today. Some of you are like giving us your lunch break. Some of you are probably totally ready for for um, for um, dinner. So um, thank you very much. And um, we'll see you soon. And if, 
Enjoy your summer or winter, wherever you are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thanks Thank for saying. I'll touch my with you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you very much, everyone.